It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Buffalo Bills and the Indianapolis Colts. Coming up next. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Coming up, we've got a good one here in the AFC, as it'll be the Buffalo Bills taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. Uh, before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I could give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play, but here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. Tyler Bass about ready to get us going. And off we go on EA Sports. Dallas Flowers going to bring this out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by Gardner Minshew, six-round selection in 2019 out of Washington State. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love to win with a quarterback who leads them like that, and fans love to root for a guy who seems just like them. Minshew looking to throw it right off the bat. Throw left side, taken in by Pittman. He'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. Now Minshew. the 41 as they stop him a few yards short of the first. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. That was a good effort there trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. 
Out comes the offense for the Bills, led by their quarterback at six foot five. That's Josh Allen. I remember when he came out of Wyoming, the big question mark, could he be accurate enough to be a star in the NFL? I think it's safe to say he's put all of us in our place and put those doubts to rest. He can roll out and run it. He can bomb it over your heads. Everything in between he is an absolute nightmare for defenses to try and prepare for. And when he's on, he's an MVP caliber player each and every time he takes the field. A man who won a national championship on this very field with Georgia, it's James Cook. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. But you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Again, it's Cook. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Allen looks to throw on third and one. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Allen to Diggs there for a Buffalo first. He's a gain of six. First down, Buffalo. We're scoreless after one. The Bills with a football as we start quarter number two. As they've got it with a first and ten. Now Allen. Another target for Stephon Diggs, and he brings it in. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. At the 40-yard line. Here's Allen to throw it. Little pitch and catch to the tight end, Knox. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. They'll give him four yards there. And that will bring up third and one. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Third down and one. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they will go from the 47 now on first down. Allen going to throw. He's got the hook up with Diggs. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. He'll find Diggs once more on the completion. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. Here we go now on first and goal. Throwing now is Allen. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen taking it in from seven yards away. And the Bills post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. If you're going to play quarterback in the NFL, you've got to have great vision and you've got to remain calm when things break down in the pocket. 
Both of those traits are on display there. He surveys the situation, sees the middle of the field open, so he's just going to step up and take it himself. Very well done there. An extra point by Bass, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Minshew sets to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. To give him two yards there on the completion, and it'll be second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Looking to throw it, Minshew. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. On the return, Hardy. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. And not an abundance of time remains on the clock, Charles, but you would think more than enough to try to extend this lead before intermission. And when you're talking about extending the lead, I think you're talking about aiming for the end zone because there is plenty of time for that. The fallback is to get three. But in your mind, you put six on the board right before the half, that's a heck of a dagger and great momentum to carry into the locker room. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now second and three. From the gun, it's Allen. That's caught by Gabriel Davis. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Throwing on first down is Allen. It's complete to Diggs. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. 
Again, they'll throw with Allen. Got it complete to Khalil Shakir. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. On play action, Allen. And he will throw this one out of the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So three seconds here remain in the half. On it's the field goal unit to see about getting three points. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. The kick by Bass is good. So another scoring drive there, Charles, and an early two-score lead. You'd like the six there, partner, but you'll take the three, and I think they have to be happy about the way they moved the ball in these first two drives. They have to feel good about their opportunities the rest of the game. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much, and welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. The Bills were led in the first half by their all-world quarterback, Josh Allen. He was able to take it in himself for the game's only touchdown, and you wonder if this coaching staff will ask him to do a bit more the rest of the way. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. our scores we get started again on EA Sports and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line out come the Bills now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter and Charles they've got the lead put your coaching hat on here now what's the game plan for the second half I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Allen's throw is complete, and he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Another connection between the two. This one good for 12 and a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. 
and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Third quarter here in Indy. This is second and ten. Now Allen again. And that is caught. It's Davis. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 32-yard line. A good pick up there, 22. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Cook up the gut. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Here's a second and five. They run it again with Cook. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. To throw, it's Allen. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Cook will take this over the line. Touchdown, Buffalo. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that makes our score 17-0. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. They've kept him in check until that run. That's the first time he's really gotten loose in this game. And they have to keep that in mind. Don't dwell on the fact that he finally had a big run. You kind of are counting on that as the game went on. Get back to what you were doing before. Start limiting him again. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Now he's flushed out left. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. 
Oh, partner just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. On second down, it's Taylor. And he will maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. And that's also all for this third quarter of play. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. Now a third and six. Here's Minshew. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. First target, first catch, and a first down. Those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches. You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. A well-executed 22-yard game. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger play, and he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Gardner Minshew, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Colts are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. Well, they needed three scores to have any chance. There's the first of the three as they get into the end zone. Yeah, Brandon, I think that our guys at Next Gen Stats in charge of the win probability probably saying your chances still aren't great. But now, you still got more three minutes to go. You got to focus on the task at hand, which is going to be getting the football back as quickly as possible. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Bills are going to recover. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. On second down, Cook has some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Here's Cook again. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go.
second and five. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop. 150 left in the football game. Second and goal from the six this time. Getting the ball is Cook running left. And a little bit of space there. Takes it inside the five to the three. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. I'm assuming they're keeping this football on the ground, right? I would think so because you're looking at the clock. That's in your favor. You look at the geography of the field, right, where you are. That's in your favor as well. Keep it on the ground. Keep pounding. Run that clock down. You got everything working in your direction. Cook. Will score. Touchdown, Buffalo. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with the touchdown run. Tyler Bass now for the point after. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was James Cook capping all of that off with a touchdown run. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. Now Minshew on first and 10. He'll get this one to Pittman. And they work this well upfield across the 45. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. That's going to be caught by Allie Cox. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 26 big yards on that one. It's another first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. That's going to be taken in by Downs. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. So it's a victory here for the Buffalo Bills. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. 
Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports.